A Karen tries to force me out of my bus seat and loses her mind by swinging her handbag at my dog to get him out too. So I was taking my dog to a park quite far away to give him some quality time with himself by running around everywhere. I was hoping for a calm day of walking my dog and relaxing, but it was the complete opposite. I got on my bus with him and sat down next to the front as it was cooler than the back and it was designated for dogs. He jumped up and fell asleep. A few stops later, the entitled parent and embarrassed kid entered. My dog was fast asleep and he doesn't like being moved when asleep or he will snap at you out of fright. The two searched for seats, but it was packed. They saw me and my dog. The look of disgust on her face as she saw my dog on the seat was immense. She stormed over and demanded that me and my dog get out of the seats. I said, no, sorry, miss, but I have sat here for longer than you, why can't you just stand up and hold on as the stop isn't that far? I shall not be told what to do by you and my child has a hurt leg! He was standing pretty okay to me. The entitled kid said, Mom, can we please just stand? No! I want this seat and F this dog of our bus! I love the way she says our bus like it's hers. We had the attention of all the passengers. Some were asking her to calm down and tried showing her to the back where she could stand. Get your hands off me or I will call the police on all of you! No one stepped in her way after that. But then she crossed the line. She started trying to hit my dog with her handbag. I was pissed. What the F don't hit my dog? Well, tell it to get out of my seat! The driver actually had to stop and sort this all out. The entitled parent started lashing out at everyone, whilst the entitled kid sat next to me to stay away from her. My dog was fine with him, and he started to stroke my dog. Entitled parents saw it different. That bee has stolen my child! No, mommy, said the kid. Then the bus fell silent. That's it! She reached over and tried to drag him away, threatening him with things I won't say. The bus driver said, Hey, I'm gonna ask you to get off this bus right now. I will not have my rights infringed upon by you! The entitled parent actually threw a punch at the bus driver and it hit his stomach. Someone had already called the police and told them all about it as they could hear her screaming. And five minutes later, a police car turned up, came in to take her away. But in a flurry of fists, she hit the officer. The entitled parent went pale and the police officer said, you're under arrest. He said her rights and then said, for assault of a citizen, animal cruelty, and assault of an officer. Apparently, the entitled parent had legal issues, jail, and the entitled kid went to live with his dad, but he was able to visit any time to play with my dog. The moral of the story is, don't mess with my dog. Am I the jerk? Holy moly. The very first question I had is, how could she possibly know that the entitled parent ended up going to jail and what she was charged with and all the rest of that? Someone actually asked us in the comments and the answer is that the OP went to court to testify and also that the OP heard what she was being charged with before her Miranda rights. Someone pointed out that despite what a horror the woman was, that the OP should have let the person take the seat since the bus was full. But the OP responded and said, the seat was specifically made for dogs as the floors are not in the best condition. So I didn't even know they had buses with seats made for dogs, but apparently that's a thing. Once again, in these situations, I always feel bad for the little kid because it sounds like the little kid doesn't want to have a confrontation like this. He likes the dog. It's not a big deal to stand up, but the entitled parent here kind of forces him into this really awkward situation, but let me know what you would do if you're in this situation and jerk or not a jerk and why. Am I the jerk for calling my husband out in front of my friends for planting a recording device while we were having a girls night in? This happened last week. I told my husband I was planning on having a girls night in at home and initially he was like, no, not here, get a hotel or something. I said I couldn't afford a hotel, plus there's no need for a hotel. He asked if he could join us if he's allowed to go, but I said no. No, that's not how a girls night in works. He eventually agreed to let me have it and said he'd go out so my friends could be comfortable. I invited the girls over and most of them had a lot of heavy venting to do. At some points, things got a bit emotionally charged and there was crying, lots of it. After that, we brought in the food and drinks and I went to turn the TV on. I spotted a small device tucked on the side of it. I took a look and found that it was actually a voice recording device. I was in disbelief. 
truth. I knew my husband put it there to listen to our private talk, which felt highly violating. I didn't hide it from the girls. I showed them the device, called my husband to get him home, and confronted him right there in front of the girls. The girls were shocked, and my husband denied it after I flipped out and called him out. Then said he was feeling curious to know what we were talking about and wanted to make sure we weren't talking trash about him specifically. The event was cut short and the girls left. I kept lashing out at him for ruining the night and possibly my relationship and my trust with my friends. I said that not only did he violate my privacy but my friend's privacy as well because they were talking about very personal stuff and he argued that it was no big deal. That I should have just let him join if we had nothing to hide and that this was on them for opening up about private matters to begin with. He went on to talk about how I humiliated him to call him out in front of my friends. I told him they deserve to know who he really is after what he's done. We argued some more and he went out again. We're in conflict until today and I feel like I made a mistake calling him out like that aside from how I felt about it. He claims that my friends will no longer respect him after this. Am I the jerk for calling out my husband in front of my friends for planting a recording device while we were having a girls night in? This is a terrifying situation. I mean, you're in a position where you're being monitored of your most private intimate details you're sharing with your friends and you never would have even found out that you were being monitored in the first place unless you happen to stumble upon it. He's really that concerned that they're talking trash about him? Why does he care to that degree? The OP didn't say anything about them having problems before this, so he's just curious what they're saying about him for no reason other than maybe they might possibly talk trash about him, but he doesn't have anything to base it on. It's just in the off chance that they do. And as always, the worst part here is that he denies it before ultimately saying that he did do it because he says, no, I didn't do it. And then says, well, I did. I just want to see if you're going to talk trash about me. So he lied within the lie. I know a lot of people will probably make the argument that maybe she should have talked to him about it in private to see what was up instead of blasting him in front of everyone first. But I could see why with something like this, you would just be so angry that you would want answers right then and there. So if this was you, you had your significant other who put a recording device on you secretly to see what you were saying with your friends, how would you react? Let me know down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. Am I the jerk for saying I told you so when my wife got banned from seeing our grandson? My wife has been in constant constant contact with our daughter-in-law, our son's wife, about plenty of things. Their very recent argument ensued after my wife kept insisting on being present in the delivery room despite getting a resounding no. My wife was having none of it. After my son and his wife changed hospitals to throw my wife off after she threatened to barge into the room, she eventually found out, I didn't tell her, and got very mad. I told her to stop and think, because if she keeps this up, she will lose all chances to see her grandbaby. She told me off and went to make a huge scene of the hospital that my daughter-in-law was at. It did not end well and my wife came home crying hysterically after getting chewed out by our son and kicked out of the hospital. Things remained tense until my son called to invite me to see the baby for the first time. He did not invite my wife, which sent her into a mental breakdown. I had an argument with her after she tried to guilt me into staying with her and shame my son for keeping his mom away from her grandbaby, but I told her, I told you so, and said that she had plenty of opportunities to get get right with our daughter-in-law, but she blew them away because of her stubbornness. She started yelling about how unsupportive and cruel I was, just like our son, to be siding against her instead of defending her and staying home with her when our son banned her from meeting her grandbaby. I went anyway, and she kept arguing about me taking the wrong side instead of defending her. I feel bad for her, but at the same time, I think she was being irrational and made this a competition despite knowing how our son and his wife felt about her behavior. So, So, am I the jerk for saying I told you so when my wife got banned from seeing our grandson? It's pretty surprising how common of a situation it is to have the mother of the baby and the future grandmother, or in other words, the parent of one of the people having the kid, fighting over who gets to be in the delivery room and who gets to be the one that gets to be with the baby first. The obvious solution to this is to listen to the desire of the person giving birth. They are the ones who are the most vulnerable and going through the most in the entire situation, and it's ultimately their choice, but 
but a lot of people don't seem to agree with that for whatever reason. I think it's totally fine to say, hey, I do want to be there, but if they say no, you got to respect that decision. It's not like you're never going to be able to see the baby ever again, but maybe you are on the complete opposite end of this. Let me know what you would do if you were in this scenario and jerk or not a jerk and why. Am I the jerk for refusing to have my facial scar photoshopped for the wedding? I'm a 32-year-old female. My fiance, who's 34, Aaron, are getting married soon. We got done with the wedding planning, although my future mother-in-law basically disagreed with every arrangement we had. This whole issue came up recently. Aaron and I were discussing the wedding photos and my facial scar that I had in my early 20s came up. Aaron suggested that we have this area of my face where my scar is located photoshopped. I laughed, thinking he was joking, but he said it was for real. I was taken aback, but he explained that this is what photoshopping is and that these are wedding photos that last for years and he'd rather have them be flawless. I looked at him and asked if he sees my face as a flaw. He immediately apologized and said, absolutely not. It's just that all couples point out what should and should not be photoshopped to get the best wedding photos. He then admitted that it was his mom's suggestion and he saw that she had a point this time. I refused and we began fighting. Aaron said that I was being a huge overreactor and that it's not about the scar itself, but the overall look of the photos. And I was being too sensitive for no reason. I had an argument with my future mother-in-law after she nicely tried to talk to me into considering it. Most of the women in the family agreed with her and Aaron said, this is what photoshopping is for and lots of people do it because they're not happy with a certain area of their appearance. I told them I'm different because I'm not bothered by my appearance, nor do I want to change it for any reason or occasion for that matter. They went on to say that I need therapy for me to cope with my past trauma, but I don't think my refusal has anything to do with it. Aaron is visibly upset with my response. He said he loves me no matter what and that I was ridiculous to be so hung up on this non-issue and holding it against him and his family who want what's best for me. I don't know if this is just my past insecurities popping up and I'm not sure if I'm overreacting and getting offended for no reason. So, am I the jerk for refusing to have my facial scar photoshopped for the wedding? I can't understand why anyone in this situation would care whatsoever about having a scar in the photo other than the person that has the scar. If she is totally fine with it, why would anyone assume that she's not? I mean, if she's never brought up that she doesn't want to have the scar in photos or wants to change anything, there's nothing about the scar itself that would make the photos flawed. Things like lighting, maybe, or the environment, or other things that are not tied to the people themselves. Maybe the OP sees the scar as a part of her identity, or maybe she just likes the way she looks with the scar, or maybe she doesn't want to change the photos. But whatever the case, it's weird that this is even an argument to begin with, because just because it's normal to Photoshop doesn't mean that everyone needs to do it. It's a social law that you must follow. That's just ridiculous. So let me know what you would do if you're in this situation, if you were the one that had the scar on your face and jerk or not a jerk and why. Am I the jerk for telling my brother to go ahead and sue my husband for breaking his hearing aid during a prank? Here's some context. My brother is 23 years old. He's a college student with a hearing disability. My parents got him a $4,000 hearing aid to be able to hear properly. So last week while my husband, who's 32 years old, and I, 26 years old, were visiting my parents, my husband hid my brother's hearing aid as a prank and it got damaged in the process. After looking for the hearing aid for hours, my husband handed it back to my brother while laughing in his face about how freaked out he looked. He didn't know how delicate this type of device is and ended up breaking it while hiding it. My brother had a breakdown and started yelling at my husband and threatening him with court if he doesn't pay for a new hearing aid. My husband didn't think he was serious and laughed him off. I was mortified to say the least and I told my brother to do it. Sue my husband if he had to. My husband side-eyed me and said, all right, princess. Well, two days ago, my husband came home and was full on panicking, saying that my brother is going through with his threat and suing. I shrugged and remained calm and collected. He started yelling, WTF at my reaction, urged me to call my brother and tell him to back down, but I said no. He did this to himself and deserves no sympathy or advocating from me. He was shocked, yelled that it was just a prank with no intentions of hurting anyone and then shamed me for not taking his side. Moreover, he said that my brother only felt confident in suing him after I, quote, encouraged him by telling him to go ahead and sue. We had an argument, then I went upstairs and stayed in my room. He must have called my parents because later he complained about them deciding to stay out of it and let my brother sue. He then complained about how this is going to affect us both since he doesn't have that kind of money to give my brother. This morning he blew up at me saying, me and my family are a bunch of sad, pathetic jerks who can't take a joke and are willing to easily drive 
drag others to court and ruin their relationship with them over a couple of grand. So am I the jerk for telling my brother to go ahead and sue my husband for breaking his hearing aid during a prank? If the brother is going to sue the husband and drag him through court anyway, I don't understand why the husband wouldn't just say, okay, I'll pay for it, but I don't have the money right now. This is how much I can pay now and make some sort of plan in order to pay him back. I can't see how he would go on without trying to find a way to replace his hearing aid, whether there's court or not. That's the part that's the most baffling to me. It almost seems like he doesn't think he should repair or replace the hearing aid, which makes no sense. And the husband and wife, I mean, I'm assuming they're sharing funds, but in this post, there seems to be a distinction that he, the husband, specifically can't afford to replace the hearing aid. Who else does he think is going to pay for it? The brother who didn't break his own hearing aid? And if the OP didn't encourage her brother to sue, where would that have left her brother? With no hearing aid and the husband, I assume, just ignoring any request to replace it. So if this was you in the situation, what would you do and jerk or not a jerk and why?